Hi everyone, I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head. Talking about science education and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. This is episode 91. And today we're talking about standards-based grading. We're talking about sports and we're talking about science education. And in that order, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP91. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, in standards-based grading, teachers are supposed to assess student proficiency in skills using a proficiency scale. So for example, I have one right here, okay, where it starts from emerging, then goes to developing, proficient, and extending for this skill. Okay, one thing teachers struggle with when doing standards-based grading is how to communicate student proficiency when using percentages. You know, a lot of teachers have asked what would a student's proficiency be if they have an overall mark of 80% or 90% or whatever? My answer, there's no way you can accurately determine how well a student is, is, is doing in each skill by looking at the overall proficiency, oh, sorry, overall percentage. Okay, so consider the example of a football player who's invited to the NFL Combine. And to my Canadian colleagues who don't know what the Combine is, it's basically a big football trial with a player um, performing several tasks like the 40-yard dash, the vertical jump, or the bench press. These are all related to football skills, okay, like speed and agility and the ability, ability to push back on other players. Okay, so let's say this football player scores an overall 80% on their performance. If we use a five-star system to show the player's proficiency for each task, can we assume then that this player scores four out of five for each task? Well, this is a rhetorical question because the 80% overall and the four out of five stars is quite arbitrary. Okay, well, 80% might not be, but the four out of five stars is. And this is not really accurate of a player's strengths and weaknesses, right? What's more likely is that this player gets more stars in some skills and fewer in others. For example, like this, if, a, if this player is a wide receiver, they might get five stars in sprinting and in jumping, but not so much on bench press, excuse me, because they're not pushing back on players all, all the time. Wide receivers are running and jumping, okay? So on the other hand, if this player is a lineman, then they might get five stars on bench press because they're pushing back on people all the time, but less on speed. The point is an overall percentage, like 80%, can't tell you how well a player executes on each specific skill. And this is why the same won't work in education. Finding overall percentages by averaging assignments and tests and then trying to report back on specific standards in standards-based grading won't work. What should happen is that we change our marks book to record proficiency of skills. For example, this one, we have proficiency scale and this skill that I'm trying to assess. Then when we align our tests to one or two skills and we collect more and more of the assignments that are aligned to standards, then we'll get a better picture as to how well each student is doing for each standard. That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below. And handouts once again are at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP91. Thanks for watching. And let's talk science education again soon.